Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, hello, my name is Audrey DeYoung, and this is Audrey Live. And thank you for joining us again here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, bringing you what's new, what's happening, and uh, some creativity to your life. Uh, today on the show, we have Lydia Steves. Uh, she will demonstrate her amazing backgrounds for her adorable little animals. And also Holly Hanley uh, will show us her textured snowflake. Uh, so we've got lots happening today. And uh, just kind of want to start out with uh, mentioning to, to make sure that you um, share this and uh, comment, ask questions during the show so that uh, we can answer any of the questions that you have and uh, just get to know where you're from and uh, a little bit about each other. This is our time to, to spend together an hour each week and catch up with things that are going on out there in the world and, uh, and join or enjoy some creativity together. Um, Christmas is like approaching. We're almost, I think we're at like, like the five and a half, six week mark um yeah like christmas is going to be here before we know it and i don't know about the rest of you but i haven't really prepared this year um as i have in past years uh just i guess you're kind of just always waiting for what's going to happen or what is christmas going to look like this year and uh, finally this week, I kind of thought, you know what, uh, I've still got the pumpkins out there from Halloween. And maybe I'm just kind of thinking that I know in the US they have their Thanksgiving next week and they're still enjoying the fall decorations and things like that. Um, so maybe I'm just kind of on that line this year that I'm kind of just hanging tough. Uh, and uh, our weather's still been pretty good. We've had a little bit of snow here in Ontario, but uh, today we have about a 14, 15 degree day and some sunshine. So I think this is going to be the weekend to do the old switcheroo, to get rid of the fall stuff and uh, bring out the winter Christmas decorations. Um, not sure what everybody else's plans are for this Christmas. Um, I know you know, with the uncertainty of COVID and the way that everything is, uh, most of us don't know what it's going to look like or what our plans are. Um, we want to be together. We want to, to spend some time like we always have, but we know deep down it's, it's not going to be the same. Um, not the same tradition wise uh, this Christmas. Um, but I know there's going to be lots of ways that you can find that Christmas joy uh, with your family or with your, 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 uh, what do they say, your bubble of 10, so to speak, and, uh, and things that you can do. And one thing, I, I kind of looked up some ideas of what to do this year. And one thing was simplify, which that I think I have definitely done. Um, this is the year to bear down. To, to really think specifically about your priorities and your goals and what do you want your Christmas to look like in your holiday season with your family. Uh, ask the people who you spend Christmas with what they would like to do. Um, you know, what are they comfortable with? What do they want to do for this holiday season? Maybe you can come up with some new traditions um, uh, for, for, the, um, for the holiday season. Another one is shop locally shop locally make sure and i mean i tried to do this as much as possible and i tried to reiterate it with people to shop at your local businesses uh, as much as you possibly can you know uh, instead of picking up a starbucks card this year and i love starbucks more than anybody else uh, but maybe go to your local cafe and and support them and get a gift card for for your um i know i always get a gift card a coffee gift card from tippies or starbucks for for my mail lady and things like that so you know instead of go to the local cafe um also with pizza you know or with takeout instead of taking out from from one of the known brands, go to one of the mom and pop shops, the small restaurants, uh, get a gift card from them or take out from them, support them. Also to make sure that you're supporting your local food banks and pantries and shelters and charities. Um, they need your help and our help more than ever uh, this year. So if you can give, make sure you do give. Um, Another one is shop early and ship early. So if you can't buy it locally, like there's certain things you're looking for and you know, I just cannot find it in my local town. I've shopped here. Uh, when, you're, when you are ordering online, make sure that you 
ship shop early so that it shipped early so that it gets there before Christmas. Uh, either you get it before Christmas or to simplify, you can have it shipped directly to uh, whoever you're, you're sending the gift to. So that's kind of a good idea. You know, that kind of skips that one step. Um, also, one thing that I'm doing is homemade gifts. We've kind of started that a couple of years ago, our family. And uh, so we've kind of focused on making gifts for each other. And, uh, you know, it can be anything if you're, you're crafty, you know, you can do any type of gifts. But if, um, you know, if you're not crafty, it can be something baked. It can be a, everybody loves a baked gift at Christmas time. Uh, or I know they have some of those. My daughter got one last year. It was like a jar and it's just all different ingredients in there. So you can make cookies yourself. So that way, you know, uh, during the holidays, you've got to bake cookie cookies with the kids or the grandkids, uh, that's a great opportunity too. Um, also be understanding, understanding. Uh, everyone has their different levels of fears and cautiousness uh, in regards to COVID. Uh, even if you don't quite understand why somebody won't celebrate with you or why they don't want to be uh, part of the in-person festivities, I try to be respectful and willing to change. Uh, I know our family, uh, my husband's family, the DeYoung family and the Monster family, um, you know, probably won't get together as a whole family like we normally do. You know, we're looking at, you know, 20, 30 people and, and we've got some new babies on both sides that, you know, I'm sure that they don't want to have, uh, you know, 30 people around this newborn right now. So, you know, thinking of different traditions. I know um, what we've done uh, with the DeYoung family is we picked names and uh, we have to write a poem uh, to our secret Santa with a card. And we're just sending it off to them in the mail. And then we are gonna have uh, a time that we are gonna do a little bit of a Zoom get together and just catch up. And there's probably gonna be 30 or 40 people on the screen and we each take a turn, just kind of giving people updates what's happening in our lives and things like that. So I've, I've got my ornaments going. I'm just doing very simple. I got picked these up last year at uh, the Alberta show and I did a little bit of a back paint of them, a little bit of a stencil, put peace. So I've put a little bit of shine. I don't know if you can see that on them, but that's just something very perfect. It's gonna fit right in the card. So it's kind of a little treat. Uh, send, you know, send people a card and just something, little something in the gift card or an ornament. It's, it's very, very simple to do. You can make them detailed or very simple. Um, also, uh, stay organized. Uh, somehow chaos. I think at the beginning of COVID, I was very organized and we were getting things done. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened along the way. And I, maybe it's confusion or because we were you know, bouncing back and forth and unsure of what's happened. And I've kind of gotten a bit of unorganized. And, you know, like I said, with my, my decorating, I've kind of not stayed on top of that either. So, you know, try to stay organized, uh, you know, whether it's with the way you're decorating or your, your gift giving to make it, you know, keep track of how you're doing that. Um, shopping for non-perishable. So if you're, you know, shopping things that you need for the holiday, shop ahead of time. So you don't have to go in the stores um, later when it uh, gets super silly busy in the stores. So that's one thing that I think was important. Um, find socially distanced ways to see each other. So that's kind of neat. Uh, you know, it, we can't be all together. So technology has brought us together in so many different ways. So, um, you know, a few, few ideas is you know, if you do a secret Santa or something like that, you can open wraps, uh, gift wraps over a Zoom or a FaceTime uh, gathering. Um, they also say ho host a movie, a Christmas movie night. So say for instance, a, a certain Christmas movies on, you know, you're watching it at the same time and then you can discuss it later. Uh, bake the same cookies with the, you know, the same recipe of cookies over Skype. You can do baking, you can do crafting, you can do painting, you can do creating over Zoom. So, you know, get together with some friends. Um, I still get together with five or six ladies every Monday. Um, and we usually are in person. And for a while there, we were back to going in person. And uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, when things started going a little bit downhill again, um, a few of the ladies said, you know what? Maybe, maybe we better go back to Zoom. So we do. Every Monday, we get together for about an hour and a half, two hours on Zoom. And everybody's doing their own 
thing, uh, but we're together so we can still chat and talk about what what crafts we're doing and uh, have a great time together. So that's just something, you know, for people to be thinking about during uh, this time. What are your Christmas plans? Send me some ideas, email me, private, private, private message me on Facebook. Just send me some of your ideas of what your Christmas is going to look like this year. And then we can just kind of talk about them throughout the month of December, since it is kind of the month of Christmas. Um, also, Zoom classes, like I, I did, I monitored a class for Debbie and Deb Antonick and Tracy Moreau last week, and it was incredible. We had, oh, in between 35 and 50 people, uh, students, and we just had a great time. So that's something that, you know, you definitely can do throughout the holidays. There's lots of classes going on. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Debbie Cotton's doing this cute little guy uh, called um, Silver and Gold. I'm think she's full, but you can check and see if she has any availabilities. That's at simply-cotton.com. Uh, uh, so yeah, just fun things to do like that to get yourself into the holiday spirit. Um, so just keep that in mind, you know, throughout the next month to find things that bring you joy, that brings your family joy, and, uh, you know, new traditions that you can be doing as a family. Um, it Today, Let's get to our guest. I have our guest just waiting here for us. And our guest today is Lydia Steves. She loves animals. And you may also know that she enjoys painting cats. I enjoy seeing all her pictures on Facebook, as many of you do as well, of all her animals. Um, however, she's always considered herself a true animal lover. She grew up with dogs and guinea pigs and budgies and finds loads of inspiration in her backyard. After a wonderful trip to, us, to Africa, she's added some more exotic animals to her repertoire. She started off painting with acrylics and developed a signature technique for painting fur and feather with the Filbert Grainer. She enjoys spending time in the studio layering and building fur. The soul and personality of the animal is in the eyes. And capturing that is always rewarding. So, and she always does wonderful backgrounds and she's been doing many Zoom classes and webinars as well. So welcome, Lydia. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Hi. thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. This is great. <laughs> I love seeing all your creatures behind you there. Oh, yes, I have lots of creatures behind me. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't have any on your lap. I was going to say, I'm sure you got one on your table. They're, they're under, um, they've promised to be good. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. We don't mind seeing them. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? You've been a busy lady, I think, uh, the last uh, six, yeah. eight months. So what, what uh, new ventures have you kind of jumped into? Yeah. Um, I've been doing a lot of artful webinar Zoom uh, classes. Uh, just finished one last night, actually, Sam the Donkey. So we had a good time last night. Um, yeah, so I've been doing mostly with them. Um, I've been doing demos on um, the Artful Connected website. Okay. So I'm working on a whole series of these little four by four things so i've got oh, that's the cool. january one so we're gonna i'll demo like the month before yeah um this was this was last month so this is colored pencil oh neat yeah yeah so that i'm finding that people really like the small things that that are easily uh done so i've got a christmas oh, beautiful as well and so i yeah. just finished that demo last week and we had a cat incident we uh -oh. didn't have a cat incident. <laughs> <laughs> what was the cat incident? So what happened? <laughs> well, no, she kind of came up. She was completely sleeping, lulled me into a false sense of security. And then as soon as I started, she came up and behind my computer and on my table, you know, with all my, my technology, and was going to jump right down. So poof, <laughs> out she went. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. And, yeah, and I guess I'm going to be in that artfully connected or artful webinars live convention too. So that's in March. That sounds it's, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, coming up next week, I think already. Okay. So I've got a I got a colored pencil in that. Oh, cute. Yeah, they picked all cats. So, and then 
I've been getting into pastels a little bit. So oh. uh, this is actual soft pastel. Gorgeous. So this is like a beginner one. So I just use one smallish box of new pastels oh. um, and we'll go through that. I can't believe that's a beginner. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Beginners there. And then they'll have the, the, the it's going to be like a convention with a vendor and they're going to have make and takes and they're going to have a kickoff evening. So people are going to get a tote bag and they're going to paint it all together. And oh, um, yeah. So much fun. Yeah. <laughs> So if anybody wants any information on that, make sure that they email me or, um, you know, go to my website. I've got uh, my calendar all is up there. Oh, so perfect. They can perfect. Keep in, they can keep in, <laughs> but that, yes, I have been busy. <laughs> you have been busy. <laughs> I have been busy. Yes. So I, how did you actually start into the creative industry? Uh, well, my, uh, my background is a art teacher at the high school level. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so when we moved out, I, I'm from BC. And when we moved out to Ontario, you know, small kids never kind of got back into teaching to recertify and so on. And uh, I found uh, decorative painting. There's a, there was a couple of shops in town and I started teaching there. And then Linda Locke gave me an opportunity to write a book and, you know, off I went. Yeah. 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 And you've never stopped since. No, it's a perfect balance, really. You know, I can feed that creative part of me and um, still be home, still do all my things. Now I created the cat. I tossed the kids out, but now I have cats to foster. I do a lot of fostering for the Humane Society and I volunteer in the clinic there. The uh, Well, not not this year, but yeah, yeah I usually yeah. am in the operating room there and help out with that too. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it gives me a lot of how flexibility. Many, how many cre creatures do you have uh, with you about at this well, point in time? Oh, well, I only have the one mother left oh, and okay. her three babies went back last week for a spay and uh, they're all adopted. And oh, nice. this, mama is just waiting for her spay, but she's got a, a complication in the ear. So, you know, we're dealing with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, we'll oh, probably be good. here for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had, had up to, let's see, my biggest litter was nine. So I had oh, wow. my, nine kittens um, actually born in my house. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun. <laughs> Tons of fun. Tons, Tons of fun. Of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I read someplace too that you started to explore colored pencils a few years back. So you were always more acrylics, oil. So what, how's your transition gone with? I've been into color pencil for like over 10 years. Over 10 years now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. got into color pencil a, a long time ago. I've got two books written there, lots of online videos, uh, all before COVID and such. So yeah, definitely been into colored pencils. Um, acrylics is still, you know, people still like acrylics too, but yeah. color yeah. pencil has just not gone away. Yeah, oh. it's very, very popular. Yeah, Extremely yeah, popular. yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. funny, I've never really gotten into colored pencils and maybe just because I never took, I never had an opportunity to take a class. Yeah. So I've tried yeah. to do a little bit on my own, but I, I'm just, I think I need to take like an online class or something like that just to yeah. learn a little well, bit more how to use them, you know, like. You are my website. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Because for that exact reason, earlier this year, I have color basics, color pencil basics, part one and two. And I go through some of the things that you might be asking or querying about right now. Just like, okay, there's all this stuff. It's not going away. What does it entail? Yeah. yeah. And I give you some exercises free. I give you some exercises to try, talk a little bit about the pencils. It's um, the second part, I guess, is about how to apply it to animals, yeah. but um, it's all the same. It's all the same as far as how to, you know, sharpen the pencil and use the pencil and, and that yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah. And people are still absolutely loving it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll have mm -hmm. to definitely look into it. I think for me, it's more time. You know, when I'm going to go paint something yeah. or create something, you know, I'm comfortable with acrylics. I have everything here. Sure. So yeah. that's what I use, right? But I would love to, you know, try a few different things for sure. Well, it's always a balance, isn't it? Between yeah. comfort and then pushing yourself to, you know, you have to know why you would like to try colored pencils before, you know, you want to actually, like you say, invest the time 
into yeah. doing them. So okay. yeah, okay. yeah. But so if all... anybody wants to learn, they can just go to your website, which is lydiasteves.com, correct? Yeah. Yeah, Perfect. I got color pencil basics and I did one on soft pastel too, because it seems like people are interested in soft pastel. So yeah. again, they're just free sort of informational videos that uh, answer a lot of questions that you might have, um, you know, without having to get out there and purchase a bunch of things first. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because, it, you know, it stuff costs. Stuff costs it does, money. it does. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So what are you going to show us today? Well, um, I was going to show you how I use pan pastels, how I got into pan pastels um, and a bit of the journey. And then I'm going to show you how I did one of the backgrounds. So whenever you Perfect. want me to, you know, whenever yeah. you flip me off. <laughs> well, well, we'll flip you over. <laughs> yeah, just flip me over. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I mean, I guess the thing is that I do put them... I do use them in conjunction with my colored pencils. Most people don't do a whole thing in pan pastels. And there's a couple of reasons for that. They use them in conjunction either with colored pencils or maybe the pastel pencils or just the sticks, the, the soft pencil sticks. Um, you know, like we always think of uh, the thicker things. So, they're quite versatile and they can do a lot of things or they can be very simple. It's just, um, it's just what you want. And again, like how you grow and how you change and how you get comfortable with something and how you move through the different steps. And I'm just going to show you some of the things that I've done along my journey because it has been over, I bet you it's about 10 years that I've been using pan pastels too. Yeah. Sounds perfect. All right. Yeah. Let's see what you have for us. Thank okay. you. I'll just change my camera here. Okay, so the thing with colored pencils that I've always found is that, um, especially at the beginning, that there was always a very plain background. And I didn't like that. I've always liked a really, really nice background. So I tried a few different things. Um, I worked on some scrapbooking paper. So all this is scrapbooking paper. Um, and I found that limiting, of course, because when I went to teach a design, people wanted to have it and they couldn't get it. And, you know, it was in now and, and out the next day. So, um, and the paper can be a little bit problematic as well. So while it's fun and it's a bit of a novelty, I thought, no, no, that's not quite what I wanted. Then I went and experimented with these um, twinkling H2Os and they had them in radiant rains and all things like that. And they were hugely fun and they gave me a little bit more creativity and a little bit more um, availability as far as what I wanted to do. But they too were difficult for people to get them um, and they changed their colors and they changed their what was available this year and so on a little bit trendier i guess um and so that became again problematic so that's when i i went to visit my daughter in toronto you know big city and she was still at work so i would always go up the road to the art store and i found pan pastels and i bought them one set at a time um, but you can get them in a different variety of sets uh, as you would like it. So they come in tints, they come in brights, they come in shades, and they come in extra darks. And within that, so let's see, you get this one here. This is phthalo greens. You would have a phthalo green tint, you'd have a phthalo green, you'd have a phthalo green, a dark or shade, and a phthalo green extra dark. So they are in value, a value system. They also come in some metallics and they come in some pearlescence. These are very fun. They're not a big, they're not a big, um, dramatic look but they are fun you know they are fun to have so you wouldn't spend your first dollars on that though i think if you want to go out and get something i would suggest the brights because i do have some holes out here so but 
you would have a full range of colors, plus you have a white and you have black. So technically, you should be able to make tints because tints would be adding white and you should be able to make shades because shades would be adding the black. So if you're going to start off, you probably want to start off with something like this. Sometimes they package them up for you, like in a portrait set, or sometimes they put package them into um, maybe a landscape set. Um, and sometimes they do animal sets too. You know, you just have to decide like at the store what, what it is that you would like. But if you don't know what you would like, that's probably a good place to start. And they come in these plastic containers, pans. And they're not, uh, they're not maybe quite as dusty as the sticks, but um, like you say, you can, they're quite nice. They're very nice and creamy. And um, they are dusty though. Pan pa or pastels just in general, are just a little bit dirtier than, um, than colored pencil. They come with all manner of applicators though. So you can get some big sponges and some little sponges, and then you can get some of these handles. So if you don't like being too dirty and you want some more details and things like that, these little handles, and then they come with these little sleeves and you put them over top and you use them uh, like that. They also come like this in these little eye makeup applicators. So all that come with your pan pastels are in there. They're in the same area. Um, I use, I use these cosmetic sponges that I get from the shoppers drug mart and they that's, and you wash them out. They, they keep staining, but you wash them out and you can use them over, over and over again. So I can kind of show you a few things that you can actually do with them. You can be super simple, super simple. A couple of colors that kind of go together, put that in the background there, and then you can do your colored pencil. Um, you will have to fix them with a workable fixative, mostly because you'll just end up rubbing it off as you do everything else. And I also use Gamsol liquid, so I don't want it running out into the background. So you could be simple or you can be a little bit more creative. So for instance, this one, I have kind of put in the idea of a fuzzed out background. Maybe these are echinacea flowers. This was one of my earlier ones. So, you know, you're not as bold when you are working, when you're first getting into things. And then you get bolder. A little bit bolder. You get ideas. You think, okay, what else can I do with this? So this is my snowy owl and this is all pan pastels in the background. So I've done this arctic sky and I've got maybe th three colors these at least. One, two, three, four colors in there starting up with the yellow and then moving down into the purplish down here. So that was lots of fun and very effective because for me, the pan pastels are about setting. I want a setting for my little animals. I don't want boring backgrounds and I don't want to color the backgrounds. I don't want to have to actually color 10 hours on a background when I would rather be doing, um, I'd rather be doing the animal. And plus I am a painter. I like the painterly aspect of it. So for this one, this has been always a very popular one for people, they like it. Who doesn't like fall colors? So again, I've got maybe four or five colors in there. And I kind of put in the idea, the impression of the background, and then I've done a few bits of details with my colored pencils. I have used them with stencils, actually. So I have just slip slapped two or three greens and then I've gotten a stencil and I've tapped in through the stencil and I've got that to do as a background. Again, a setting. I like a setting. Now, as you go along, you decide that you want the, the pastels to do maybe a little bit more than what you've been asking them to do so far. Like a nice little blotchy background is one thing. This one I had in a magazine, I think 
last year or the year before. And I had the inspiration from the fabric that the kitten was actually in, but I didn't want to do all the little tiny, like you don't want to make the fabric more important than the kitten. So I took the colors of the fabric and I did a blotchy background. I colored him in and then I went back and I added more colors and kept on um, doing a, like a variety of steps between pastel and colored pencil. So I've got some coloring in there and in here, I've gone back and added a variety of things. Um, so it just depends on your journey and what it is that you would like to do. I have done things completely in pastel. I started with the pan pastels here and then I finished up with sticks. And um, I tried to do it all with past, uh, the pan pastels, but the, there's, there are limitations. Your tendency will be to over blend if you do everything with pastels and you're not careful. So that's one thing that pan pastels maybe can't do. Um, the other thing is you might not be able to get the vibrancy that you can get with some of the other soft pastels that are out there on the market. So I started this one also with pan pastels and I did quite a bit of it. I did lots of this texture with those little um, tools. Um, and then I had to go in with my sticks for here. And then I just couldn't get that red until I went to some of the, I think my Sennelier's or my Terry Ludwig's. Um, so they, like, they, like I say, they are hugely, hugely versatile. And then we come to, I'm going to show you that background there for that Stella. I have found that with my deer, I like to have a little bit more of a landscape background. So same with this, this one here, I've actually put in a winter, a winter background um, so that it really sets a little bit more of a realistic scene. And this obviously is a meadow. And again, it's the, you know, the texture and the direction that you put in your strokes, exactly like you would do a painting. All right, Stella. I got this photo um, from a lady in Nova Scotia. And she lets me use her photos and she has lots of deer photos. So I've got a piece of Stonehenge paper. And what I did was I printed out um, the line drawing of what I'm going to be doing in the colored pencil. And all my colors. So before are, you go on, Lydia, so how did you come up with that line drawing? This line drawing? Yeah. Uh, well, I looked at her photo and I drew it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Um, perfect. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> so she has her photos and I crop them and, um, you know, I decide what I want to do with them. And then, uh, yeah, then I draw them on a, usually I draw them on tracing paper and I, and I go from there. And then I make the pattern for you <laughs> so that you don't have to do that part. Okay. So I've got all these colors, lots of colors. And I usually put out, I usually put out one of these little guys for each one. And we will start with this diarolide tint. And I'm going to start up here where I want the lightest. Okay. So when you glue or, you know, affix your little mask, it's not so that you avoid bringing the pan pastel into that area. It's more to avoid a harsh line. Uh, so you don't want, you don't want a harsh line. You know, I'll show you again when I get a darker color. Do you want to be able to place this sun in a certain spot. You wanna be able to place some of your darks in certain spots. And I just find that if you know kind of where you want 
your um, object, your animal, um, then you can, then you're able to to do that better. All right, so you can see they are a little dusty. And when you put them in, you want to leave some space. I didn't leave too much there because I know that's kind of what I want. So this is orange. I'm going to come into there. Maybe I'm going to come down as well. Leaving some space, thinking about it. Pastels actually have um, lots of coverage ability, so layers are good. So this is kind of XE, XE up in this area, but down here was like trees or brush. So I want to mimic that as I put this on. Okay, so if I had this glued right down and I went right up tight to it, then you've got a harsh line. And you just don't want harsh lines. You can take a kneaded eraser. You can take some of it off or break it up. Because when you want to put your pattern on, there's no way you're going to be able to um, get that all lined, lined up. Okay. So is it okay if you put the pan pastel where the deer is going to be? Like you'll be able to go over that? Yeah. If you look at the sample, um, like I wouldn't put the dark in there necessarily where I'm going to want to put light later, but I think I have actually a fair bit of this yellowy orange in there and it helps you kind of get a little bit more color into your artwork. I mean, animals, you know, we say they're brown, 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 and brown. But if you look carefully at things, they're way more interesting than that. And um, so the pan pastels will actually help you achieve some of that. All right, I do have this brighter yellow too. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of that in. I got green on my pastel, on my little applicator. So I didn't clean that one very well, did I? All right. So you see, you're not really trying to fill everything all up from side to side. Lots of people love the idea of pastels because they want to blend it into one big soft, I would say mess, but um, pastels are beautiful. They're vibrant and they shimmer. And as soon as you start to over blend something like that, you squish it all down. And then it's a little bit like over blending with oils. And you know how we love to make mud. You, um, I've heard that phrase an awful lot. And you don't want to do that with pastels either. Okay. So I'm just looking here now, thinking about what it is that I would like thinking that's probably pretty good. And let's do some of this magenta. So down here, same idea. I'm kind of thinking about those little hedges in the background. Don't make them too straight. Think about what it is that you're trying to paint. Now, somebody has asked a question about colored pencils here. Um, do you okay. need a special sharpener for colored pencils? Is that true? Um, not really, no. I mean, you have to have a good one because that's what you're going to be doing is sharpening, but people have a lot of success. There's a lot out there in the market and everybody has their very favorites. Um, lots of people have battery operated ones, they have electric ones, and there's handheld ones. 
Um, I usually say a good quality one, but then I always have somebody in my class that has one from the dollar store and that they absolutely love. So um, what you do have to do is realize that uh, colored pencils are waxy. And so what ends up happening is they can gum up you, the blade. So you do want to sharpen a regular graphite pencil in there um, regularly, I guess, to kind of clean up to kind of clean up the the blades so that they're ready for you your next one. And sometimes people break because they're like over cranking and stuff, but you know you learn how to do that too. All right, so I've got the magenta in there. Got some down here. Maybe maybe I want a little bit up here too. When you do something, you don't want to, like that was a little row of, of bushes, but we don't really want a, a super straight um, look to everything. Try to keep things a little bit flowy. Maybe a bit more orange over here. You can kind of see that if you are a painter, that this is a really great way of getting a beautiful background. I don't think I could do this kind of a background with just colored pencils. Um, I would still be working at it, I think. All right. I think I'm liking that. Lifting up, making sure I don't have any harsh edges. That line there was um, something that was already on the paper. So you do have to be careful with your paper, make sure that you're storing it in a good place that this kind of thing isn't going to happen to it. Usually the, this is Stonehenge paper, by the way, that just happens to be what I like, I like doing. Um, you could, there is something else with pan pastels that um, is called a colorless blender. It looks like one of the white ones. And some people love, like to use that too, to like do this step that I'm doing right now, uh, where I'm just kind of blending things, but I don't necessarily want to add any more color. Um, I find the tints do that really well. So I don't find that the, the colorless blender is something that I go to. You guys are just going to have to ignore that green. Okay. And there we go. Just make sure I've got that. That's the, you know, the winter moon or the sun going down there. All right. So I'm liking what I've got here. And so now what I'm going to do is um, go into my darks. So I've got this violet shade and I've got a violet extra dark. So start where you know you want this color. I'm just kind of hitting and like a little bit of a jerky kind of a motion, lifting this up so I don't create a harsh edge. Okay, you know, do I like that? Are they looking sort of like trees? They're placing it in there, but you're kind of blending it all together too, right? Well, it's more my touch, I guess. I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily blending. Like a blending to me would be that I would flip this over to a thing and I would start to rub like this. It doesn't really, well, I hope you can kind of see that. I just, all I did was make it gray. Um, so I have stuff on my, on my um, sponge and I'm just ever so lightly like hitting it and trying to create the texture that I want. Try not to blow. Oops, he's coming off. Try not to blow away the dust. To be, you do have to be careful with things like this. Um, I had I had a picture of my Buster cat laying in the pan pastels there the other day. Um, and then I had some, uh, a person, you know, text me to say I shouldn't do that because they're toxic. So 
art supplies can be, and you do need to be a little bit more aware, maybe a little bit more than we have in the past with our, our deco paints and things like that, because those are all made uh, for non-toxic with the non-toxicity in mind. And um, art supplies aren't always, that's not one of their focuses necessarily. So you do have to be a little bit more careful. Okay, so I put the, I put the pastels on the way I want them. I don't try to put them on and then blend them into what I want. You kind of have to know what you want to do and paint, paint with them. All right, and now we have our last dark, although I did bring Payne's gray too. I don't know, just in case. So I'm gonna put this, I'm trying to do, see how I've got it darker at the bottom here and then up this way and then, oh, then we're gonna make some trees too. It looks amazing. We got a couple minutes left there. Okay, I knew you were gonna chuck me soon. I think I did pretty good though. Hey, I think we you got did a awesome. lot. <laughs> That's incredible. Incredible what you got done for sure. Uh, okay, I'll just maybe make a tree. So here we go with a tree. And I want a tree up here. You can see it's, um, I like a bit of an impressionistic look. Um, and then I leave the fairly realistic for my actual little animal. And you can just, you just sort of work up the value scale so that, like I say, violet and violet, uh, violet shade, violet, extra dark. And then I can say, well, you know what? I think I would like to have a little bit more color. So I'm gonna put maybe a little bit more orange if you like. You can put a little bit more magenta. Then you can go and go and go. Yeah, so I'd say they're, they're lots of fun to work with, these little pans. Um, you know, they have their limitations too. Like I say, artists don't, I don't think that they do the whole thing with pan pastels. They always seem to work with something else in mind, either sticks or color pencils or, um, or the pastel pencils. And they can be anything from super plain to, you know, you can you can really you can really do a lot with them. It just depends on your skill and how much you've decided that you would like to do. Am I about right there, um, Audrey? That sounds perfect. Yes, it looks very cool. Yeah, it's kind of painterly and um, fun to kind of get in. So now to seal this, like what would you have to do to that now before you go? So I would take it outside here. and I would bang it on the back so that extra dust um, le uh, leans over, like bangs away. I use um, the Krylon workable fixative and you just put a few light layers on and then take a wet or not a wet, a white Kleenex and just rub in a few spots to see if you pull up. Um, if you pull up color, then you have to put another spray on it. But if not, then you're, you're ready to go. You'd take off your mask before you would go and spray that. And you spray it outside and you leave it outside until the smell is gone and then you can bring it back into your studio. Again, just to kind of keep this, um, the safety aspect of it under control a little bit. There is this. The Spectrafix, which lots of people are liking because it's a little bit less toxic. It is more difficult to use, though. You would definitely need to get a different spray top because I find it drips. So I haven't, I don't love it yet. I know I should, but I don't love that yet. Um, at the end, pastel just in general 
isn't always fixed at the end. We always think it should be fixed, but it isn't. It, you need to um, frame it under glass, just the same as colored pencil. If you do want to um, put a, like an actual varnish on it, you can do that. I've done the bottom of memory boxes like that too. Just depends again what you want. It's just that you fixing at the end isn't necessarily something that absolutely must be done. Artists in general don't fix their soft pastels. It's just an idea we've got, I think. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, Karen asks, if you're using pan pastels on canvas, do you have to do anything to the canvas first? If, um, so you, you, it's not great on canvas. Let's just put it that way. It needs to be having a little bit more tooth than canvas. So maybe you need to sand it up a little bit. Um, I put it on, on boxes, like I say, memory boxes, and they are just paper. And sometimes the slickness of that paper too doesn't really work that well. And I have to do a lot of layers to get the effect that I want. Uh, okay. So you'd have, to, um, you'd have to do a little bit of work on that. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Well, I think everybody's thoroughly enjoy. They love the violet color and, yeah. and uh, <laughs> like just purple. looking at it progress and the trees come along so uh yeah thank yeah. you so much and uh people can find more out about lydia at lydiasteves.com yeah and uh and what was that convention you said the online um yeah so that is art. called artful webinars okay artful Perfect. webinars live interactive convention and it's march next year awesome. but registration is coming up so um, you definitely want to get there. It's on Mar uh, November 27th, 11 Eastern Standard Time. We always have to put time zones in now. I know. Okay. <laughs> That's a new thing for all of us. It is, it is. Yeah, because I mean, we've got a big country and there's four hours difference. So uh, no, four and a half. Four and a half. Yes, that's right. That's right. Four and a half. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, one last cat question. Carol is asking, could you spray canvas with the Krylon 1311 first? uh 1311 no don't do it at that all those things are final finishes you don't want that you want a workable finish uh yeah. fixative because you are working on it you need to keep on going with your working so you don't want a final finish at all yeah yeah, so, yeah. um i would probably the problem is the problem with canvas and gessoing it and that kind of stuff is actually you're putting plasticky kind, kinds of surfaces on there or finishes on there. So you need to have some tooth. Pastel yeah. likes tooth. Yeah. And so if anything, you can go to like a sandpaper and just like maybe rough it up a little bit. Up a bit. Yeah. Okay. Don't make it super, super smooth. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lydia. Such great thank tips. You. It's been wonderful having you and uh, yeah. you have a great day. Uh, Great. We, well, we're almost to the weekend, aren't we? I know. Time's going so fast. It is. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Take Thanks care. Thanks a lot, Audrey. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Well, I certainly learned a lot. I don't think I've ever watched pan pastels. And I had somebody that had asked uh, about a month or so ago about pan pastels. So that's why I thought it would be uh, great to have Lydia on just to kind of show us uh, about her pan pastels and her little creatures. So hope that you enjoyed that and that you learned something. And like Lydia says, she's got some some um, videos. So just go to lydiasteves.com and uh, you can find more information about her there. Uh, next, we have Holly Hanley. She is Arthur of the Decorative Painting uh, series called Sunshine Kisses and Warm Wishes and has published numerous pattern packets and combined author books. She is best known for her textured bears and other whimsical creatures. Uh, and she loves sharing her, her love of painting. Uh, and I just love seeing all her creatures and they're also so much fun. So uh, she had a video and many of you might have seen it already, but I just thought it was very much worthwhile sharing about textured snowflakes. Since uh, a lot of us are going to be um, painting things nowadays uh, that might need a little bit of texture or your, your Christmas pieces, uh, kind of neat to, to have that as well. So uh, take a look and enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful 
dimensional snowflakes. They are so much fun to do. You're going to want to do them on all your winter projects. And you only need a few of Decorate supplies. So we're going to be using the dimensional effects, which is a texture paste, and you can add colors to them, which is so cool. So you can make different colored snowflakes. And we're going to use this pretty extra fine glamour dust, which makes everything sparkling, which is wonderful. We've got a palette knife, a couple little snowflake stencils, and some Decorate Americana paint. Okay. So basically to start, what we're going to do is we're, I just base coated the background with the blue and I'm going to take the dimensional effects. Okay, so basically you're just going to take your palette knife, you're going to grab a little bit of this out and you're going to put it on your palette. Okay, so it's really nice and creamy, easy to add any colors to it. So I'm going to make the first snowflake really nice and vibrant white. So I'm going to add just a little dash of white paint to it. Okay, and I just pick it up with my palette knife, so nice and easy, and I'm just blending that together. And you can see how nice and, and easily it blends. Okay, so basically just taking a little bit on your palette knife, you're going to pick your favorite snowflake stencil, um, put it down on the surface, hold it in place, and you're going to take that paste and you just lightly go over the stencil. Okay, so right in here. You're going to take a little bit of that paste, and usually I trim my stencils just so that I can, they're a little bit easier to use, okay? So you just hold your palette knife nice and flat, okay? And you're going to go over top of those, that little stencil, nice and gently, okay? And don't worry if you do get a little bit on the edge, if you go over, I'm going to show you how to fix that so it's nice and easy. Okay, so basically you're going to lift that gently off, and voila, there's your snowflake. So pretty, but it gets even better. You're going to add some glamour dust glitter to it while it's still wet. Okay, you just sprinkle it over top, and usually what I do is I just take um, a little sheet of paper, and you fold it in half, and basically you can take that excess glitter and you just shake it off. Okay, so basically like so, and you can give it a little dab, and there's your beautiful snowflake. Now, I went over the edge a little bit, but it's no problem at all. You basically just take a brush, or you can even use a little Q-tip, or something that's a little bit damp, and while that paste is still wet, it actually comes off pretty easily. Okay, so you can see if you make a little boo-boo there, no worries at all, okay? And like I said before, you can actually make different colored snowflakes. They are so much fun and something that you can do with your kids, like so. So I'm just taking a little bit more of the paste, so you don't need too much for the snowflakes. So you just take a little dab. And you can add any color that you want. So I'm going to make a purple one, which is really pretty. Just going to get creative here, make these different colors. But they're so cute to add, and you can put them on little gift tags or anything that you want. Okay, so you just go right over top of that stencil, nice and light. Okay. Like so. Okay, and then you're gently going to lift off that stencil and you can just rinse those off in the sink. And then we've got this pretty little purple stencil or snowflake and you can sprinkle on again that glamour dust which actually comes in gold too which is super pretty okay and then just shake off the excess and voila you've got these beautiful textured snowflakes and they just add so much to the piece you're gonna want to do them on everything they're so much fun <laughs> Thank you, Holly. They are a lot of fun and so easy to do. And of course, you got to have the sprinkles. I know uh, Holly always loves the sprinkle and the shimmer and the shine. So thank you. Thank you, Holly. Uh, and you can find more uh, of Holly um, at uh, hollyhanley.com. So you can check out 
uh, some more things from Holly there. Uh, I have been mentioning last couple of weeks that we are going to have an announcement today. Uh, so just kind of briefly, I just wanted to let people know that we are going to be, we are working with an existing company that does kids crafting kits. And uh, they want to get into the adult crafting and adult artist kits and have asked us to join them uh, in that new venture. So we're really, really excited to uh, start this new um, venture with this company. And uh, we'll definitely have more uh, information coming up in the next month or so. We're working on sample kits right now. Uh, we're gonna be doing two lines, kind of like a beginner line. Uh, so, which is just for the, the average uh, person who just wants to learn different arts and crafts and just fun, fun easy things, DIY, home uh, decor. And then we're going to come out up also with an artist line. So um, yeah, we're working with many different companies right now and artists and educators and things like that to come up with some really neat, unique kits. Um, after we did uh, both of our Pin It uh, live virtual events, a lot of people were saying, well, is there a kit for that? We just, we just want enough to make one thing, you know, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, or you're wanting to do crafting with friends, you know, kind of use it as a paint night kind of experience. Uh, so this basically will have everything in it uh, that you need to, to make that one um, piece of art or craft. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And uh, of course, I'll give more information as we uh, grow and come up with our, our actual uh plan of attack, I guess, for our first kit. So uh, keep uh, tuned for that. And uh, probably it'll be January, it'll be the new year when we launch it. Uh, but just kind of wanted to give you guys the first tidbit of information on what we are doing and how excited we are about it. Um, other than that, uh, thank you, Holly, again. Thank you, Lydia, uh, for sharing your talents, for sharing your love of uh, creativity. Uh, next week, uh, we are going to be doing a show. Um, I'm actually on vacation, but we're doing a show on being thankful, thankfulness. Uh, Thursday, November 26th is the U.S. Thanksgiving. So we just want to dedicate the show to being thankful, things we're thankful for, some thankful crafting. Uh, so yeah, so make sure you join us next week, Thursday at 1, uh, which is November 26th Eastern. We always got to put that in there. And uh, hopefully there'll be some great, uh, great crafting there for you. Uh, we have a segment from Jill Fitzhenry, from Renia, and from Jen Tryon, and possibly a few more. So it, it uh, will definitely be an awesome show. Um, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and thank you for joining us. It's Audrey from Audrey Live. Have a great week.